Welcome to the course on Subriemannian geometry. Subriemannian geometry is a generalization of Riemannian geometry. Roughly speaking, a Subriemannian manifold is a Riemannian manifold together with a constraint on admissible directions of movements. In Riemannian geometry, every smooth embedded curve has locally finite length. But in Subriemannian geometry instead, if a curve fails to satisfy uh, the obligation of the constraint, then it has infinite length. One classical example one should, should carry in mind is coming from mechanics. Indeed, uh, the study of a, of a moving object are enclosed by its position in space and the speed of its moving parts, the momentum. Thus, in the manifold positions, time, speed, the possible evolutions of the object should satisfy the fact that the, the derivative of the first variables um, are equal to the second variables. In particular, some trajectories, trajectories are not allowed. As trivial examples, you cannot vary your speed without changing your position, or similarly, you cannot move into another place at speed zero. The three-dimensional Heisenberg group is the most important sub-Riemannian geometry that is not, in fact, a Riemannian one. It is also not difficult to visualize some of its features. Topologically, it is R3, the three-dimensional space. But uh, the constraint on curves is given by what is called a distribution of planes. Similarly, as a smooth vector field, smoothly assign a tangent vector at each point uh, of a manifold, a distribution of planes smoothly assign at each point a plane inside the three-dimensional space, tangent space, or at that point. Uh, the curves, that uh, we will called, will be called admissible, will be those curves that are tangent to one such a distribution. The great feature of the Heisenberg group is that its distribution is curly enough in a way that each pair of points can be connected by at least one admissible curve. From this fact, one can define a finite value distance similarly to the Riemannian case. The distance between two points is given by the infimum of the length of all those admissible curves from P to Q. In formula, uh, dPQ is equal to infimum on the length of gamma, where gamma is an admissible curve, namely its tangent to the distribution, and it's a curve that goes from P to Q. In the first part of this course, we will focus on the plane distribution of the three-dimensional isogroup. Uh, we will consider the induced distance, and we will discuss the following facts. First, such a distance turns the three-dimensional space into a metric space with the same standard topology, namely nearby points can be connected with short admissible curves. Two, between every two points, there is in fact a geodesic curve, namely the distance of each two points equal the length of some curve between them. In other words, the infimum is realized as a mean. Up to a multiplicative factor, we can think that the length of such a curve is the Euclidean length of the ambient space. This if the curve is admissible. Instead, non-admissible curve should think, should be thought of having infinite length. Third thing we will see is that this geometry, this metric space, is really new. And it is not Riemannian. It is not even by Lipschitz equivalent to a Riemannian space. 
In fact, the Heisenberg geometry resemble fractal geometry. Indeed, uh, this metric space uh, is topologically three-dimensional. However, from the metric point of view, has dimension four, more precisely the house of dimension of the space is four. After having discussed this uh, basic example of the Heisenberg group, we'll be uh, discussing the general theory. Okay, the general definition of uh, subriemannian manifold will follow as soon as we formalize the notion of a distribution to be curly enough. We need that this notion uh, um, implies that each pair of points are connected by an admissible curve. So, uh, I, so let's for let's give uh, some formalization of these notions. Okay. So first of all, by a distribution on a manifold, we mean a subbundle of the tangent bundle. It's called the manifold M, the tangent bundle TM, so the space of all the tangent vectors. So distributions, which are also called polarizations, um, uh, are said to be bracket generating if whenever we fix a point P on the manifold, and then we consider the uh, all, all the vectors tangent to delta, we perform uh, the Lie algebra generated by these vector fields, consider all the possible commutators and linear combinations. Then when we evaluate at the point P, then all these vector fields, then we get the, the whole tangent space at that point, TPN. Hmm? So I repeat. Uh, uh, distribution is called it delta, it's bracket generating. If every tangent vector v in the, in the tangent space of the manifold can be represented as a linear combination of vectors of the following type, you can see the sequence of, or like finitely many, actually, finitely many vectors that are tangent to delta. We perform some brackets between them, and then we take the linear combination and evaluate them uh, at, the point, at the point, which is the point where V is applied. A uh, subriemannian manifold is a triple M delta G, where M is a connected differentiable manifold, delta is a bracket generating distribution, and G is a smooth section of possibly definite quadratic forms on delta. In fact, G can be considered as the restriction to delta of a Riemannian metric tensor on the manifold M. In, a, in other words, we are considering scalar product on each uh, fiber delta at the point P, and that is smoothly varying in P. Then uh, a curve on M is called admissible or also horizontal. If it is absolutely continuous, so it's the integral of its derivative. And the derivative satisfies the property of the derivative at the, uh, at the point T um, is a vector that is in the distribution delta at the point, uh, at the point gamma of T. Now, when we have fixed a subriemannian manifold, we can consider the subriemannian distance, which is also called a carnot theodory metric, and is defined similarly as in the Eisenberg group. Is the, the, the distance between two points is the infimum of the length with respect to the uh, scalar products given by G, of curves connecting the two points, uh, and the curve has to be admissible, namely tangent to the distribution. Most of the results uh, that we have observed in the case of the Heisenberg group have a generalization or they're still valid uh, in, in general, in arbitrary uh, subriemannian manifolds. 
The understanding of many of the properties of Riemannian geometry come from the fact that the metric tangent of a Riemannian manifold are Euclidean spaces, and the Euclidean geometry is enough well understood. Such a notion of um, tangent is precisely defined in, in terms of limits of metric spaces, by right? dilating the space and taking a limit. Um, this, these spaces are called um, tangent cones or metric tangents. So now we ask our questions, what are the metric tangents in Subriemannian geometry? Now, the answer is not immediate. For three-dimensional Subriemannian manifold, manifold, we only have the Heisenberg group. This is another reason for it to be important. In general, unfortunately, fix a topological dimension greater or equal than, than seven, the possible tangents are infinitely many. It may not be uh, the same even for a, for a given uh, uh, subrimanian many. However, there is a good news. The good news is that analogously as the Heisenberg structure has a group structure, the metric tangent of a subrimanian manifold has a Lie group structure at most of its point. And actually at every point, it still has a quotient of a, of a, Lie, of a Lie group. Actually, the uh, metric tangents at the regular points have even more structure, not only a, a Lie group structure, but they also have a dilation property. They have homomorphisms that stretch the distance for any uh, wanted factor. So these Lie groups equipped with their distance are called Carnot groups. This course will be focusing quite a bit on Carnot groups, okay? So the idea is that we should first understand very well the geometry of Carnot groups, okay? And which are particular examples of Subriemannian manifolds. After this, we can go back to the general case of Riemannian manifold. And there is quite a bit of a hope to uh, understand Carnot groups, um, exactly because as the translation by an element and the dilation property uh, are used to define all the theory of calculus in uh, the Euclidean space, we can still do the same calculus on Carnot groups. I want you to remember the classical definition of derivative, the derivative of, of a real valued function. In the definition, we make use of addition, multiplication, and limits. F prime at x is the equal to the limit of f evaluated at x plus h minus f of x divided by h. All these operations are present in, in Carnot groups. Right? So we have translations, dilations, and a topology. Thus, we have a, a metric definition of derivative. This derivative nowadays is called a Pansu derivative in honor of the work that Pierre Pansu did on the, on the subject. So in this course, we will discuss uh, Carnot groups in detail from the uh, algebraic and geometric viewpoint. We will discuss the, uh, the, the theory of calculus on, on, uh, on Carnot groups, and in particular, we will discuss and prove the, uh, the version of the Rademacher theorem for Carnot groups, proved by Pierre Pansou. Namely, Lipschitz functions are differentiable almost everywhere. But before that, I would like to uh, present you other mathematical settings in which Carnot groups appear. So first of all, we already saw that they appear as tangents of Subriemannian manifolds. Then second, uh, we will see that they appear as boundaries of rank one symmetric spaces. Um, the particular example of the Heisenberg group appears as the visual boundary of complex hyperbolic space. 
more generally, um, uh, when, when we consider um, uh, a homogeneous uh, Riemannian manifold that has curvature, sexual curvature negative, then the boundary at infinity, it's called the parabolic visual boundary, has the structure of a, of a, of a metric uh, graded group. Third, we will see that Carnot groups appear in geometric group theory. They appear as asymptotic cones of nilpotent finitely generated groups or asymptotic cones of uh, Riemannian nilpotent link groups. Okay, these are, these are facts that we will discuss during the course. If you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. This will also suggest the course to other people. If you want to see more videos on Sabriman and Geometry, please subscribe to the channel, clicking below. Bye.